Greetings and good Monday morning, this 21st day of November 2022, third decade of the 21st century. Uh, full disclosure, uh, I have tried repeatedly to make several videos. Um, over here to my left, I guess that the viewer's right, um, I have a nice desktop computer, dual screens, all of that jazz, and for some reason it is just not functioning correctly. It, it, I, I, I have no idea. And the reason I say all that is because I've tried to make several videos. I've tried to edit them, put it together, produce them, get them published. And whatever's going on with this computer, I can't tell you. Um, so with that in mind, uh, I've been trying to respond, well, read, respond, and react to um, some feedback I had on my most recent video that is probably a month old now. So if you're new to my channel, uh, for anybody who comments, I consider that like having a virtual conversation. So I like to read the comments, react and respond in real time as candidly as possible uh, while doing my level best to maintain a sense of objectivity. So without further ado, first one up, Stace Catalan, <clears throat> uh, responding to my video, why so divisive, do we rely on another civil war? Stace, it's not the first time I've tried to respond to this, so it's like the fourth or fifth time I've tried to respond, but I digress. So Stace, first, I may not have said it in the past, but I'm sorry for the loss or for your loss. Uh, I haven't been able to watch the Winchesters. All right, let me pause right there. Uh, Stace, uh, thank you again. Um, here's what I'll tell you. I've said it before and I'll say it again because I think it, it bears repeating. I suppose in some way, shape, or form, I associated losing a child as an extraordinary event for extraordinary people, where I myself do not fancy me or mine extraordinary. So when it happened, there was a bit of disbelief, like, is this really happening? Are you serious? We are not the type of people this happens to. And then, you know, another reality kicks in, which is that of my poor son didn't ask for any of this. And all I could hope for is that he had in I, I all I can hope for is that he did not have any idea of what was going on, that he did not understand or grasp his mortality slipping away. Um, I could go on and on, but that's not the point of this video. So th uh, Stace, thank you. Uh, I haven't been able to watch the Winchesters and thus didn't comment. Uh, yeah, I get it. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Stace, you also haven't finished Supernatural. Depending on where you're at in Supernatural, I don't know if you're at a point in the story where it may conflict with the Winchesters, if you find any confliction whatsoever. Um, I have been watching Interview with a Vampire as far as a new series with new seasons. I have been keeping up with the series I had already begun. This midterm election, okay, so uh, interview with a vampire. Um, I've only had one friend comment on it so far, and as far as I know, he was a big fan of the Anne Rice novels, and he's not a fan. I haven't seen it. Um, I also think uh, he's a bit more socio-politically sensitive, so whatever he's seeing, he's disagreeing with, but that's that's him, you know. This midterm election, I voted early because I was going to be on the road returning from a trip to New Orleans to watch the Ravens beat the Saints. I did not vote straight party as I rarely do. Good on you. Uh, I don't view myself as a single platform voter. Good on you. I make a spreadsheet of the candidates and their stances plus any past voting, representatives and senators, whether state or national history. Uh, the candidates I vote for are those they agree with. I have had the two-party conversations with co-workers, one who also tends to quote Russell Brand. With agreement, we are frustrated knowing that more parties won't get more support without the money to support them. Yeah, um, here's what I'll say about that. And it's like the fourth or fifth time I've had to say it. Admittedly, good, bad, or indifferent, I despise the Democratic Party. Without knowing the actual people involved, 
I know several of the more popular candidates I despise. Um, but I despise the Democratic Party in principle and history alone. I do not believe in the party switch. Um, that being said, I, I get a sense of cringe. I get a sense of disdain. I get a sense of anger when it comes to that party. Individual candidates running on that party's platform may be running on that party's platform because of one or two issues that are very near and dear to their heart. And that party is the only party that supports those issues. And I'm well aware of that. And I understand that as a concept. And I'm, I'm going to make a point here in a moment. Um, unfortunately, and I don't know if it's the same in Texas, we only had two candidates for an alternative party for our state Senate. So one of our state Senate positions was up for grabs and we had a full on blue blood Democrat. We had a full on red blood Republican, and then we had a libertarian and a green party candidate. Um, green party is kind of weird to me. Um, I, I think it's noble to a certain extent, but I think a lot of their platforms are just not realistic. I looked heavily at the independent candidate and it was a very hard realization to come to, which was, for the most part, the libertarian candidate was basically just a rebranded Democrat. And I talked to several people, and they basically said that in their best estimation, voting for a third-party candidate is basically voting for a Democrat. Um, so I, I ended up voting Republican pretty much all the way down. When it came to certain positions, we had a lot of single candidates where there, you either voted for the candidate or you didn't vote for the candidate. Um, a lot of them were, were Republican. A couple of them were Democrat. Uh, admittedly, whether it's a character flaw, I did not vote for the Democrat just because in principle I won't vote Democrat. It doesn't mean that I was like, oh, yay, Republican, and I don't enjoy being labeled as a Republican. I just find Republicans a lot less destructive, slightly more patriotic, well, slightly patriotic at all, and not as destructive for the nation. And I have my thoughts and reasons and opinions for that that are, don't have to be shared by anybody, let alone, you know, Stace, my one and only loyal viewer and responder. Um, this video is not about that, so I'm not going to harp on that. Um, what I will say is having tried to make this video numerous times and having had an opportunity to reflect and reflect and reflect admittedly as an individual with my own personal bias towards the democratic party i was a bit frustrated to include i i, I was like really half or more of the country is currently satisfied with the status of affairs so much so that they want more of it. And that's not a completely genuine thing to say. Um, it's my understanding that the Republicans took the House of Representatives, well, the Congress, but either the Democrats won the Senate or the Senate's tied. I, I stopped. I, I honestly stopped looking into it. So I had, to, I had to try to wrap my head around how half or more of the country is not just satisfied with the status of affairs, but wants more of it. And then I had to stop and I was like, well, hang on a second. Think about that for a moment. Think about how much you can't stand the Democratic Party. And I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. And it's like, what if there are people who equally cannot stand the Republican Party? Not necessarily individual Republicans, but they hear Republican, they hear conservative, and just like you cringe, just like you get filled with disdain and a little bit of anger and some negative emotions when you hear Democrat. What if there are people that are equally and opposite the same way with conservatives or the Republican Party? And what if these are good people? These are law-abiding citizens. These are productive members of society. Just whatever they got going on, um, they're not fans of conservatives or the Republican Party. You know, why can't there be 
an equal and opposite antithesis to you? And why can't that also, if I think I'm good, I, I know the antithesis would be evil, but why can't there be an equally good person who just feels the same way, has the same level of instantaneous emotional bias? And that's one of the only logical conclusions I can come up with is they're not necessarily, these people are not necessarily thrilled with the status of things that, you know, they're not happy about gas prices. They're not happy about inflation. They're not happy about whatever, but they're just equally as um, spiteful towards the Republican party. Um, and, you know, that, I, I think if if I can feel the same way about Dem if I can feel that way about Democrats, then why can't somebody feel the same way about the Republican Party? Admittedly, though, I don't know where to go from here. You know, that's you know because that's not the right answer. Spiteful voting, and I think in all honesty, I probably voted spitefully. Truthfully, I was more concerned about local. I was more concerned about our school board. I have two kids in high school. I was more concerned about our city council and people who control certain things locally. Here where I live, we don't have what one would call good career level jobs. We don't have much in the way of industry. We have retail stacked on top of retail followed by some more retail. We have a handful of small mom and pop shops. And then we also have fast food stacked on top of fast food stacked on top of restaurants. That's pretty much our economy. Uh, service, food and retail. All right. We don't have industry. We don't produce anything. We, we don't have an Amazon fulfillment center. We don't have what I would call good career level employment around here. We have a lot of low income employment, which for the young service members and their their young spouses having jobs like that for the young spouses is good for people like me who have children that are old enough to work those are good jobs for them however for people like me who decided to stay here there's not a massive industry of good paying career level jobs that you could stick with until your next retirement and there's a reason for that. And a lot of that goes to, to our elected members on various seats in the community. And that meant more to me than who's going to the Senate or who's going to Congress. I only had one person to vote for for Congress. I had four to vote for for the National Senate. And at that point, it was like, well, if we give control back over to the Democrats, it's a lot of nonsense and expansion of government power. That's my chief complaint. If, you know, uh, separating my emotions from the circumstances for a moment, my biggest complaint with the Democratic Party is they love to enhance and increase the size of government. I don't want more government. I physically don't want 80,000 brand new IRS agents poking around in the lives of everyday regular people just because they have $600 in their bank account. Just because you've got $600 in your bank account does not mean the government should be tracking your every purchase. And that's big government. And some people, I think, and Stace, I don't know if you would qualify for this. I don't know if you can do a deep dive and be like, oh yeah, that might be me. But some people they want they want the shiny they want the fancy benefit that gets trotted out and put on display and they don't want to read the fine print which is the consequences the consequences are in order to have the government fund all of this stuff they have to increase taxes or they have to secure revenue from taxes ah i'm i'm going down the rabbit hole i'm going to stop Stace on the more meta stuff, which I'm always thankful you're willing to get meta with me on various things. Um, haven't gotten into Interview with a Vampire yet. Right now, my wife and I are watching Better Call Saul because everybody seems to be on a two-week holiday break. Better Call Saul is fantastic. Oh, my God, it's so good. And what's even funnier is Bob Odenkirk is from the same area my wife and I are from. So... But wait, there's more. 
I had one more comment. This was from a John Doe. I'm guessing that's a pseudonym or a non diplume. Ever heard of the troubles in Ireland? Yeah, something like that. Okay, uh, John Doe. Um, not going to attribute context, not going to attribute uh, how you meant to deliver that. Um, I am uniquely familiar with what you're talking about for two reasons. When I served as a mountain warfare instructor at the Mountain Warfare Training Center in Bridgeport, California, we always had a British Royal Marine Commando liaison because the British Royal Marine Commandos pioneered a mountain warfare training system before the United States military did. So we always had a liaison from the British Royal Marine Commandos to provide guidance and assistance. When I first got there, the British Royal Marine Commando liaison uh, was a veteran of the conflict in Ireland on behalf of the British Royal Marines. And he used to talk to us at length about some of the things they did, they, they witnessed when it came to guerrilla warfare, because unbeknownst to us, after the invasion of Iraq, the follow-on campaigns in Iraq and the follow-on campaigns in Afghanistan did include a form of guerrilla warfare. Um, case in point, how the IRA utilized IEDs. When I was going through college the first time during my first degree towards uh, homeland security with a focus on counterterrorism, I wrote a couple of papers on the IRA, mainly because everybody was taking the easy way out and everybody was doing Al-Qaeda or Abu Sayyaf or some sort of fanatical Islamic group. <clears throat> Me, I tried to diversify. Like I did Om Shinrikyo, I did IRA, um, a few others. You know, I tried to get away from the, the Islamic thing because out of 30 plus students or less, everybody was doing fanatical Islam. I am uniquely familiar with the conflict in Ireland. Essentially, you had some Irish Catholic, well, Roman Catholic purists that wanted to remain a separate entity, a free and sovereign state, sovereign country of Ireland. And then there were the pro predominantly Protestant Irish who wanted to be a part of the United Kingdom, the United Kingdom being England, Scotland, and Ireland. And it it, it eventually led to civil strife. And for a while, it was pretty targeted until certain members of the Irish Republican Army started to use indiscriminate guerrilla warfare, in which case innocent civilians were killed. Um, I used to know it by heart. Uh, U2, U2 wrote a song about it, Sunday, Bloody Sunday. Uh, the, um, the OMOG bombing or something. I can't remember. I used to, I got a paper on it somewhere that I wrote. I am familiar with it. And John Doe, I, I don't know the context of what you're trying to imply or what you're trying to say. I am familiar with it. I don't know if you're suggesting that we're on that path, that we're on that trajectory. I don't know if you're trying to suggest that, um, people can be so fixated on their beliefs uh, there's a lot that can be extrapolated from that single sentence comment. Uh, because my video was titled, Why So Divisive? Do We Really Want Another Civil War? And the point of that was, at the crux of it, Ireland had a religious foundation supporting a separation from the United Kingdom while others were like, ah, hell, there's some benefits to being part of the United Kingdom. We're still Irish. That may be an oversimplification to include. I don't know if you can over, overly simplify what's going on right now. I don't believe that the majority of us are full-blown dedicated to the cause. I don't believe that the majority of us are hardcore blue blood lefties or hardcore red blood righties. I do believe in my heart of hearts that the overwhelming majority of media outlets, be they social, internet-based, to include YouTube, to include Google, 
uh, legacy media like CNN, MSNBC, and a few others, I do believe that they are, if not already adequately labeled, basically a propaganda arm, a propaganda wing of hardcore leftist ideology, damn near socialistic, communistic, just very anti-American, anti-patriotic sentiment. Um, but that's my belief. Uh, even though it's my channel, I'm not trying to encourage anybody else to believe that. Just the way I hear things, the way I, I receive, process, and interpret information, the, the rhetoric I hear leads me to believe that. That is my conclusion. Increase government, increase the number of government agents, basically begin the process of inducing a form of socialism, communism, a form of tyranny, where ultimately the citizenry has to rely exclusively on the government for everything, you know, and, and that there's very powerful actors that want to secure their place and become modern day American oligarchs, where they prop up governments to support their individual needs. And it's, it's a lot like what we had in Russia or still have in Russia. And to me, that's not the American way. Um, that's not where I want to go. Uh, there are some people who believe that a lot of millennials slash Gen Z voted under the false pretense that their student debt was going to get waived, only to find out that the Supreme Court said no, that's belligerently unconstitutional. I don't know if that was the cause of stopping the proposed red wave. But John, without a little more context, I'm not really sure what you're getting at because I don't know if we're at the point yet, like Ireland, where they had reached the ultimate uh, conclusion and the culminating point where they had to physically fight for what they believed in. I don't know if we're there yet. We we could be, we might be. I, I just I don't know, but we'll see. And for anybody who gets a chance to watch this, you, you hopefully you know the deal. I don't care if you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I, I don't care about any of that. I'm not trying to get monetized. I'm not trying to become like the next Ben Shapiro or Dave Rubin. I'm trying to find more like-minded people who are disenfranchised by the two-party system and are probably more purple than red or blue that just want to have conversations that don't believe in division, that believe we are more united than anything else but these outside agencies are trying to divide us. So I want to hear from you. Even if you are a hardcore red-blooded righty or a hardcore blue-blooded lefty, I want to hear from you. All right? I just want to have the conversations. And if you do, I appreciate it, and you're awesome. Till next time.